Hi everybody, this is Steve Guzzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Premiere Elements, and here we are in Adobe Premiere Elements. I have on my timeline a slideshow, or actually just a series of still photos, and to make the still photos more interesting, I've keyframed a little pan and zoom motion. Now the pan and zoom motion was created, of course, in the Applied Effects panel, so if I select a clip on the timeline, and I go over to the toolbar on the right, and select Applied Effects, which is the little FX button with this pencil on it. And then click open the keyframe controller by clicking on the little stopwatch in the upper right hand corner. I can see my keyframes. Now most of the time when you apply keyframes, they're applied in a linear fashion, which means that the motion from one set of keyframes to the other is in a straight line and at a steady pace. That's the default setting for it. So we go from this zoom or this scale and position setting to the next in a linear fashion at the same speed. But you're not limited to that. You can make some of this motion more interesting by interpolating the keyframes. Now interpolation just means basically setting them beyond their default setting to something that maybe moves at a non-steady pace or that moves in a non-straight line. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go to the scale keyframe, the very first scale keyframe, and if I right click on it, you notice that I have some options here for linear movement, Bezier, auto Bezier, continuous Bezier. Beziers are just a method of setting how the motion occurs. Don't worry about it right now. We'll take a look at a Bezier a little bit later in this video. But by default, it's set to a linear time, which means that the motion from one scale position to the next moves at a steady pace. But you're not limited to that. I can, for instance, set hold, in which case, the motion from one keyframe to the other, don't you know ignore the position motion right now, just look at the scale, stays the same until it reaches the second keyframe, at which point it jumps to its new setting. Now, I don't know what situation would call for you to do that, but that's an option. That's essentially interpolating the keyframe motion so that the setting for the keyframe remains the same until you hit the second keyframe. Let's right click on that. I'm going to set that to one of the presets. There is ease in and ease out. We'll select ease out. Ease in would be something you apply to a second or third keyframe, but with ease out, we're going to start out slowly as we leave this zoom, and then it's going to speed up as it reaches the second keyframe. Let me play it. It's a subtle difference, but watch it and you should be able to see it. We start slowly and then we speed up as we reach the second keyframe. Not a huge difference. It's very subtle, but it does make the motion a little more interesting. That's keyframe interpolation. Let's set that back by right clicking on it, set it back to linear. And we'll try the keyframe for position. Position has some unique settings in its interpolation. So if I right click on this first keyframe, you see that I have temporal and spatial interpolation. Temporal interpolation has to do with time. So it's very similar to what we set with zoom. I can either have a linear pacing for the motion between keyframes, ease in or ease out, which are presets, hold, or even beziers which again, I'll show you a Bezier in just a moment, is a way to manually set the pace of the movement. But there's also spatial interpolation in this particular property. Spatial interpolation has to do with the movement from one keyframe to the other. So our position keyframes change from this. Again, we're trying to ignore the uh, scale settings right now, but from this to this, we move down a little bit. And in fact, if I select motion here in the applied effects panel and then toggle it open just by clicking on the little triangle to the left, you can see there's a little blue line that runs across the monitor panel. That blue line is the motion for position. And in fact, if you look carefully, there's a little crosshair at the beginning that's showing me the very first keyframe. And if I move the playhead through, you can see that little crosshair moving up the blue line. That is the straight line of motion from one position setting to the other. And again, it moves in a straight line, but we're not limited to a straight line. And in fact, I'm just going to sit on the very first keyframe by clicking on that go to previous keyframe. I'm sitting right on top of it. And if you look really closely on this blue line, just a short distance from its end, 
you'll see there's a little dot which is a handle and in fact watch my cursor right now it's a white arrow when I get to that point it's going to turn black there it is that's the handle for the bezier beziers are curves that you affect by essentially grabbing handles that are attached to the end point so if I drag on this little handle you notice that now my line of motion is getting curved there's also another handle up here for the end keyframe there it is that little dot and I could drag on that now look at the shape of my line instead of being a straight line from one position setting to the other now it is sort of an S shape and if I scrub through by slowly moving this playhead you can see that instead of moving in a straight line from position to position now it kind of swings right and then swings left and we can see that as I play the clip swings right swings left so interpolation is kind of a higher level thing you may not use it very often but keyframe interpolation is part of the deeper toolkit here in Premiere Elements and it allows you to do something a little more interesting rather than the standard linear motion from one set of keyframes to another now, if you want to know more tips and tricks like this and learn about the deeper toolkit here in Premiere Elements, be sure and check out the tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If you want to know everything there is to know about this wonderful program, check out the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Premiere Elements. That's available at amazon.com. I'm Steve. I'm the guy who wrote the book, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.